Hi guys! Hey guys! Uh, welcome back and in this week, we're going to be talking about the great things about being Swahili. Yes. So, but first we're going to start with, what is the definition of being a Swahili? And in this case, we're going to tell you the definition that is our own. So, please don't be offended again. Um, in our last video, a lot of people, well not a lot of people, a few people had a question of how we can be defined as um, Swahili when we are not ethnically Swahili. So I will mention to you right now, we know the definition of Swahili and actual Swahili ethnically is that uh, they're a mixture of Bantu and Arab. We know that, but we, in this day and age, I feel like Swahilis have become such an amalgamation of cultures. Like it's many that, different things. Yeah, I feel like we can be Swahili if we call ourselves Swahili, not because it's like almost being an American, you know? It's like you're American, but you can be Hispanic, you can be um, Arab, yeah. you can be from Nigeria and you're American. You can be anything, but you can also be American. Yeah. It's almost like you're just following the culture of being an American that yeah. makes you American. Yeah. And in the same way as being a Swahili. Exactly. Um, and I feel like that also very much is defined by the fact that in my definition, in our definition, is that we speak Swahili primarily as our main language at home. And yeah. I'm talking Swahili as Swahili. Like Swahili proper Swahili so I feel like that also constitutes the fact that we consider ourselves Swahili, Swahili because of that so yeah and we also surrounded ourselves with the culture of being Swahili we basically whenever we were kids we associated with ourselves that way mm -hmm. um, even though our dad is Indian and our mother is Omani ethnically ethnically yeah. um, we still consider ourselves Swahili you know a lot of Yemenis consider themselves themselves Swahili a lot of um, Bulushis consider themselves Swahili. No, they a lot don't. of Well, some people do. I feel like the reason why we're saying this is because it's our own definition. Yeah, no, because so, this yeah. is what identifies us. So some people, like we know people that will say, um, mini muarabu, like ni natoka Kenya. Mm -hmm. So even if they don't speak kira kiarabu, if they consider themselves Kiarabu because they have really immersed themselves in that culture, that's fine. But we consider, like Farha and Famida, we consider consider ourselves, ourselves Waswahili for that reason. Because we're not Indian enough and we don't feel like we're Arab enough. So we're yeah. Waswahili. That's the most comfortable definition of who we identify ourselves as. Okay. Which proceeds to one of the things that we love, love being about. Swahili. It is our culture. Like, our culture is just a mishmash of so many different things that sometimes people are even confused. What is being a Swahili? Yes. It's, it's just everything, you know? Yes. There's so many different cultures that make us who we are. And we're sp speaking on behalf of being from Mombasa. Yes, and by the way. We're not really referring to people from Zanzibar, but I'm sure it's kind of the same idea. Similar, um, maybe. Similar, but being from Mombasa, our culture is just so different and rich so so rich that i don't even know how to describe how a culture is except that we will because we have a few things that all kind of correlates to the culture that we are so proud of um like our food and our morals parties. and our parties and how we dress and how we our put childhood. ourselves <laughs> Uh, yes, how we introduce, how, how amazing and how generous was Swahili are, I feel like it kind of all kind of encompasses in the okay. whole culture of so it. So we're going to start off with our parties. And it, the reason why we said parties because it's just not just weddings, but parties in yes. general. Okay, if a Swahili person has a have a, if a Swahili person has a party, you know it's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. It's, it's going to be fire lit okay <laughs> for my friends who have uh, who are not Swahili you're from a different culture and you are able to be lucky enough to attend one of our <laughs> weddings or one of our parties you already know you will attest to this fact you know how it gets down in our weddings yes. okay you know how it gets down in our parties in our baby showers dude <laughs> we really know how to party yes okay like we know how to party and when she says mm -hmm. party we mean like in general like the way we dress up the way we do our hair the way we dance i'm talking like you'll see 60 year old aunties breaking it down sweating better than <laughs> better than those who break it down at the reggae club in toronto you yeah. know like that's just not that i would ever know what a reggae club in toronto looks like she but you know, know <laughs> i would not know because i've never been to one but you know what i mean right so yeah, they whine way better than anyone you'll ever see. So it's like, and they can belly dance better than a belly dancer in Cairo. Yeah, man. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they can bungara more than and 
a Bhangra group in London, in <laughs> South Hall. I like Hall. how you said okay. London, not India. That's so, so hilarious. Okay, so we know how to break it down. And it's not even that. It's the facial expressions that go along with it. Yes. Okay, so everything is great about We enjoy it. And I think also our parties, we don't judge each other in we the parties. We don't judge each other. Because like, we can, for me, there's dance moves. She does, she does these Nigerian dance moves. And me, I do these like facial expressions that one person actually, I have to mention this story, okay? One of my... Uh, friends uh actually she's a young girl uh, younger than me much younger than me she actually has videotaped me two times <laughs> two times when i was pregnant like super big pregnant big <laughs> pregnant dancing like a cray cray person like crazy maniac kind of dance and she danced and she sent me a video and she said Farha, i catch you all the time in these dances and you're so hilarious why because i don't care yeah, and you know what? Uh, nobody and does. And I'm not that good either, by the way. I just I just feel like we're so carefree when we dance. We are we enjoy very ourselves. carefree. Our yeah. weddings, our parties, because, you know, technically we're not allowed to go to the club. So yes. our way uh, to let it all out is at a wedding. Yes. Okay. So it's great. Yes. Um, our food. So you come to our wedding. It's not just the music. Yeah. You're going to eat till you drop. Like, yeah. you can't even move. So make sure if you come to our wedding, don't wear you specs. Don't eat. No, don't wear spanks. And don't eat before you come. Oh, yeah. Don't eat. Yeah. Okay? Because when you get there, bring some... Okay. And also, make sure you bring extra containers because you might want to take some food home. And even if you don't bring extra containers, the aunties who are in the kitchens hosting the parties will pack you food, whether you like it or not. They're like... We, that's the generosity part of it all as well. And regarding our food, for those people who oh, don't know our so food... food. We don't have a specific type of food. We eat everything, okay? Like a Swahili food is a mixture oh, Famida, of... we have a cuisine. Yeah, but what I'm trying to tell you is this. Because of all the different cultures yes, that have moved yes. into our area, where Mombasa, the coast, yeah. okay, Mombasa, Zanzibar, all of those little coastal areas that have been mixed with Swahili, it has been, over generations, been mixed with Indian food, Arabic food, yeah. uh, local food. Um, so you will find things that are... Okay, where were we? Okay, so um, before battery died, we were talking about foods, right? Yeah, so basically about how Kenyan food is... Like, Swahili food is amazing, okay? Yes. Like, even our biryani is very different from other biryanis. And I honestly believe that our biryani is even better than the normal... Yeah, we believe... Oh, I, I believe too that our biryani is superior to every biryani in the world. Yeah. And the same thing goes with, like, most Indian foods. I feel like our tikka... Like our chicken tikka is like the bomb. The wow. Bomb. Our samosas. Oh my, god. oh my god. And actually some people can attest to that. Remember Lipa, a good friend in Canada. She used to be obsessed with our samosas in Canada. Yeah. When we used to live there. And okay. um, So anyways. Wait. And mishkaki. We need to talk about the foods that we love. Oh my god. Mishkaki. And if you don't know what that is. No. Um, how do we describe mishkaki? Mishkaki is just a bunch of meat skewered in a stick. Yeah. And yeah. it's delicious. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yummy. Yes. But Anyways, I'm going to get really hungry if I keep talking about this and it's really hard to find that food right now. So, let's yeah. continue. Um, other than the food, generosity, okay? So, if you're in Kenya and you're a Swahili person and let's say you're hungry and it's around 12.30 p.m., just go visit someone because they always have an extra plate. Literally. Anyone. Anyone will welcome you in their home open, like open-heartedly. They won't even be like... Mm. Like, who you know, and could just say, Sita Kusudi. No, they won't. Maybe they're thinking it, but they will never ever admit it. And they would rather feed you their guest than even themselves. Yeah, we are one of the most generous, like, communities. Communities, like. yeah. Yes, we're so very, true. very helpful. We're very welcoming. We don't care, you know, where you're from. We are very, very welcoming. Yes. Uh, moving on to that, um, our morals. Okay, so we have been trained to be great since we are children. Okay, yes. like good kids, Yani. Yes, like you cannot be disrespectful to your elders. Oh, that's you cannot. I feel like there are some communities that I don't want to mention names, even in Mombasa themselves, the, other than the Swahili communities, but they that are very like lax and easier on their kids. Not what Swahilis. You will get a whooping on your behind if you do not behave and that's the same way i raise my children 
it's not that I beat my kids up for no reason. It's that I do not tolerate insolence. And that's how we were raised. And I feel like it's a good upbringing, right? Yeah, and speaking of that, I'll give you an example. When I was a kid, I would always like, if let's say I want to tell my mom something, um, I will just be like, mama, even if there's a guest and she's talking, I'll be like, ma, 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 ma. And my mom would just do, whoosh. So just give her the eye. The, the moment you get that eye, you should just walk away, retreat slowly, and disappear. <laughs> and that's it. Yes. There is no interrupting grown people um, conversations. Yes. And that meant we could not even attend weddings. Yes. Things have changed right now, but um, back but when we were younger, we could not even do that because only grown people would do such a thing. Yeah. And also I wanted to add to that is that I feel like there are certain uh, etiquettes of um, uh, things that are very subtle but only am Swahili would teach their child like for instance what you just said or like for instance you enter a room and you you expect a child to greet an adult it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter how shy you are you have to greet an adult you have to say salam alaikum or hello when you see an adult it's just respectful and if you do not that is very disrespectful even if you're shy if it doesn't matter what kind of person you are you have to greet your elders, elders. and uh, the same thing again with the whole uh, like whatever for instance we used to have guests exactly the same thing as Famida is, is talking about it's because Adults are talking, children should not be present. It's like, you know what I mean? There's yeah. a and it's an unsaid thing, by the way. So it's kind of almost like, you know a child has been raised right kind of thing when uh, they're in that kind of mode, if you know yeah. what I mean. But okay. I mean, not that kids are not raised right. I'm sorry, I'm going on a tangent. But what I'm saying is that we teach our kids really good morals. Yeah. The Swahili culture is very big on respect morals. and morals and obedience and good habits. Mashallah, alhamdulillah. Okay, marriages. Okay, so regarding marriages, I'm not one to talk because I'm not married, but I will mention, marriage. I will mention this. Um, we just had a, a guest uh, and that we had a small debate and we had a guest and um, we were talking about feminism and sexism in our communities and all that. And uh, actually, we we're discussing this video that we were about to make. And so this guest of ours mentioned to us that um, that uh, in their opinion, um, one thing that we cannot surpass in any way, shape, or form is the fact that Swahili marriages, Masha Allah, we stick to our men and we stick to our wives and we like we endure, we communicate, we try to stick it out with our spouses in in a very different way from I feel like in the American culture. Um, I feel like in the American culture we're very. Uh, What's the word? We run away. We give up. We Easily. Give up yeah. Really fast. So, I mean, there are situations where you have to do, you definitely have to leave the marriage. And, and it's, it's not necessarily a good thing too. Yeah. Right? It's also, I guess, not the b best thing because we are trying to stick through it even if it's a really bad situation. Yeah. But at the same time, we realize that there's an importance of marriage, I yes. think. And we value it very like much. It's so. through thick and thin till death do you part. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Um, again, sorry to interrupt. This is not personal. When I speak of marriage, I'm not saying that my marriage is perfect. Um, Alhamdulillah, I'm happy, but I'm not one to give advice in terms of yeah. marriage. But uh, it's one of the things that this person mentioned to me, and I think it is something Very significant true. to mention. And my favorite one is our childhood. And childhood in Mombasa, being a Swahili kid growing up there, was the best. When I say the best, I mean we grew up playing in the streets we were able to really truly enjoy our childhood okay oh like um lenga lenga like we would play with anything oh okay we God. do not need toys to play and enjoy our lives and i think that made it even better yes and i should mention this though um even though we we were raised swahili again um famida as growing up in Mombasa, as much as she liked being Swahili, she was very indoorsy. Like, I was always an outdoorsy person. This is a, you know, tidbit of who we are. For me, it has always been very indoorsy and I've always been outdoorsy. Diala, can you please go? It's okay. fine. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. We can continue. It's mm -hmm. not a big deal. My mm -hmm. child was interrupting. It's fine. We're sorry about that. We're sorry about that. But anyway, the point is, um, we're trying to say that 
Famida used to play with her dollies and her imaginary friends because she had a few. I had a few. And uh, maybe there's Majini, we never know. And she used to play teacups and teapots and all that. And I used to be a chokora, like legit chokora. Like I used to be so nasty. Play outside, not that in the mud, in the mud, like whenever it would rain, they would make potholes, and I used to swim in them, like legit, like swim chomo, like oh, it's so amazing. We have a pool in our backyard, which we didn't, obviously. Or for instance, whenever we'd go outside, it, it's just amazing because we would play code, right? Yeah. We would play all those things. And speaking of childhoods, for me, dad, you forgot to mention this. This is one of the best things about our childhoods. What the junk food in Mombasa? Oh my god the best when you can mush up Vyazva Karai and make a little hole ah, in the bag. It's so nasty, it's so good. so nasty, but the best. Or and Acharya Vitoria. Rosh. Oh, Vitoria. Uh, which one? My Mbeza Kizungu. My Mbetu Ya Kuwash and just shove it in the masala and you just ah. It was amazing. And, 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 and uh, Chana Bateta, there, there was that masi that behind was a the masi. Yeah, masi. They had Chana Bateta even mix ile oh ki mabase to ni ile. I don't know. Babukachiri. Babukachiri. <laughs> okay. But anyways, this is the end of our video. Um, so Please. It was very random. It was so random and like uh, all over the place. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But um, if you have any childhood story you want to share um, growing up, whether you were raised in Mombasa, Zanzibar, or anywhere in the world, okay, um, an amazing childhood memory, please comment down below. Okay. This goes for Famida students as well. We know you're watching. Yeah. So, so please something. comment what, what's your favorite childhood memory, okay? Okay. Down below. Um and do subscribe, comment and like. Thank you so much and post notifications. We'll click the bell so you can be notified whenever we upload videos. Bye. Thank you. Bye.